Um, how wonderful to get such an applause for something that basically hasn't even started yet. Um, so uh, my name is Christopher Neugebauer. Um, if you need any assistance this week, uh, please don't he hesitate to find me and ask. Uh, myself and other core organizers are wearing purple lanyards like this here one. Uh, volunteer ones are wearing blue tealish colored ones and they can help find us as well if you need help. Um, hopefully you enjoy your week. Uh, thank you all for coming here. Um, so today we're gonna talk a bit about uh, where you are, uh, what this conference here is and what you'll be doing uh, for the remainder of this week. Uh, so we'll, we'll start with the, uh, the where are you bit. Um, so first, um, I wish to pay respect to the traditional and original owners of this land, the Muanina people, to pay respect to those who have passed before us and to acknowledge today's Tasmanian Aboriginal community who are the custodians of this land. And now that I've done the important thing, you can tune out of this talk. If you wish to tune out of this talk, here are some Wi-Fi credentials for you. <laughs> Um, the Australian Academic and Research Network, which as you would well know is Australia's university's ISP, has somehow managed to find their way into this here house of vice and provide them to, uh, to provide all of us with the same standard of internet that we've come to expect from Linux Conf AU. Uh, the network ID is Linux Conf AU, the password is Hobart2017, and uh, that's the sort of speeds I was getting earlier today. Um, so it's not bad. If you use RefPoint free Wi-Fi, you will not get to those numbers and you will be complaining to me. I'd prefer it if you were using our network. So, uh, we're somewhere around 42.7 degrees south here in Hobart. Um, something you may not know if you're from uh, somewhere like over in the bits where land is, is that there's a giant hole in the ozone layer, uh, somewhere like around this bit here down the bottom, which is very, very close to us. So even though it may not be uh, ridiculously, um, oh. thank you. So even though it may not be uh, ridiculously warm for you here, uh, we recommend that you always wear sunscreen when you are going outside. If you have not brought your own sunscreen, there will be sunscreen available at the check-in desk where you collected your badge downstairs. I uh, highly recommend you wear it whenever you go outside, including at lunch, morning tea, even if there is cloud cover, because it is very, very, very easy for you to get sunburnt here. Um, so, uh, I digress. Uh, you probably traveled south to, to get here. I actually live like 15 minutes drive north, so even I traveled south to get here. Um, <laughs> there's not much stuff at this particular latitude. Um, right, we share this with uh, the South Island, New Zealand, a uh, bit of Argentina, a bit of Chile. Um, and we're also on an island, and that means you really can't drive there. Uh, you should tell that to the couriers uh, who have our t-shirts at the moment. Uh, they'll be here soon, I swear. Um, so in the grand context uh, of things, uh, we're about as far away from anywhere as you could possibly want to be. Uh, in fact, we're south of every major city in Australia, and um, I got bored the other day and decided to find the two air routes that go closest to Hobart without actually landing here, and uh, they also avoid Hobart by quite some distance. <laughs> uh, so if you want to come to visit us here in Hobart, you definitely actually want to come here. Um, and so very many of you have. In fact, over 500 of you have come here to this conference, and that makes me terribly pleased. So uh, thank you on behalf of all our team for coming here and uh, celebrating our wonderful community. Um, I hope you enjoy it here in Hobart. So uh, more locally, uh, we're at Rest Point. It's about two kilometers walk here from the university accommodation, and it's also about two kilometers walk uh, from Franklin Square in the middle of the, uh, the Hobart City. So if you're staying at Rest Point, the local bus service, Metro, uh, they sell tickets on board for a reasonable price, and they have services going up and down Sandy Bay Road, which is the main road just outside Rest Point, very, very frequent. Uh, that doesn't help you if you're in the university accommodation. Uh, you may have noticed in your drive over here or coming down from the university that Hobart is made of hills. And uh, the residences are on top of one of our larger hills. Uh, so we hope, we've given you the real Hobart experience there, but it also does not help you get back to the university accommodation. Therefore, we have buses. These buses are available for everyone to use. We'll be looping between here, the residence, and Franklin Square from the ends of talks today and every other day this week, so you can go out and see the city and then not have to walk back up the hill. 
Um, so hopefully you find that useful. Uh, buses will be departing from the Wellington foyer, which is near where you collected your badge, uh, starting from 5.30 p.m. Even more locally, you are in the plenary hall at the Rest Point Convention Center. And the doors that you came in here, uh, into here, go right near where the speaker is. Which means that once talks are beginning, if you use those doors, you will be a distraction and everybody will hate you. So, if you do not wish for your fellow conference attendees to dislike your presence here, there is a late entrance that you can use. If when you come to these doors and they are closed, you can turn left and go to the offices and look for the signs that say Plenary Hall Late Entrance. And the Plenary Hall Late Entrance comes in at the back. Nobody will notice you and nobody will judge you for showing up late to a talk in this room. The remainder of the, uh, the, remainder of the rooms have entrances at the back. So I, I've now told you about where you are, and most importantly, I've told you how to leave if that's a thing that you so want to do. Uh, so now let's talk about what it is you paid your money to come along to. Uh, so if you don't actually know you are at LinuxConf AU, um, if you're at the wrong event, um, please stay. <laughs> LinuxConf AU is Australia and New Zealand's best free and open source software conference. Uh, well. That's not for me to say, but uh, sure, we'll go with that. Um, so it's been going for a very long time, uh, 18 years now, in fact, and it goes to a different Australian and New Zealand city uh, every single year. Uh, the first was held in 1999 in Melbourne. Uh, stand up if you're at Carlu in 1999. There's still a few of you. Okay, so in Linux Conf AU's past, uh, we normally go through each of these years, getting everybody to sit up and stand down for every single, sorry, stand up and sit down for every single year, and uh, this is the 18th Linux Conf AU, and this process is getting extremely tedious. So we're going to rush through this a bit more um, than we have in previous years. So uh, stand up if you were at Sydney in 2001, Brisbane in 2002, Perth in 03, Adelaide in 04, or Canberra in 05. Still got some old people here. Okay, stand up if you're at the first one in New Zealand, in Dunedin, in 2006. Okay, what if you're in Sydney in 2007 or 2008? 2008 was my first Linux Conf AU and I've been coming to everyone since. Um, what if you're at Hobart, in the, uh, the first Hobart one in 2009? Quite a lot of you. Okay, sit down and Stand up if you're at any of the ones between 2010 and 2016. <laughs> Raise your hand then, Adam. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, now we're returning to Hobart, where we were last in 2009. So uh, stand up if this is your first Linux Conf AU. Thank you so much for choosing to come to this conference and uh, coming to Hobart of all places to see it. Um, I really, really enjoy this conference. It is, I go to many every year and is easily one of my favorite, uh, favorites, possibly even my favorite. Um, so I hope you enjoy this week, uh, get inspired by a lot of the talks we have and make lots of really excellent new friends uh, throughout the week. Um, I certainly have enjoyed every LCA I've been to and I hope that you do as well. So thank you all for coming along. So uh, this year, uh, in case you haven't seen all the signage everywhere, including like directly in front of me, uh, the theme is the future of open source. Um, Linux.conf.au gets a lot of people who are heavily involved in, in basically shaping uh, how the world of open source grows from making the technology that, uh, that we all use on a, on a daily basis uh, through to uh, shaping our communities and setting policy. And so we thought after 18 years of this conference, it's a great opportunity for us to talk about uh, what we need to do next and the things that we need to think more about to help make open source and free software uh, grow, as a, uh, grow as a movement and, uh, and become even more successful than it already is. Um, so we found a lot of great speakers. Some of them are regular to this conference. Uh, some of them have never been here before and are coming to this Linux Conf AU first. And they all have something to say about what we, as an open source free software movement, are going to be doing in the future. And I really, really hope that you enjoy the program that's been put together. 
So uh, this, this conference is run by a different team of volunteers in a different city in Australia and New Zealand every single year. And we do that with the oversight of an organization called Linux Australia. And they're responsible, amongst other things, for providing us with a legal framework to run this event. Um, and I wish to invite Hugh Blemings, who is the current president of Linux Australia, to uh, say a few words and welcome you to the conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chris. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to, to say a few quick words. I won't take long. Um, I will add my thanks to those who've already had to um, all of you that have come here today. Some of you have come as far as Launceston and, uh, <laughs> and further. But um, it's, it's, tr it's truly wonderful to see such, a, such a, a, a large number of new attendees. Particularly grateful for the um, speakers who are taking so much time to be prepared to present at the event. Uh, our sponsors, uh, without whom we could not run the uh, run the off run the uh, run the show, so we very much appreciate their support. And last but no means least, Chris and his team for putting on what looks to be an excellent show. Please enjoy the conference. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Lou. I've switched this off this time, so hopefully you don't get any more noise. <laughs> um, so yes, thanks, Hugh. Um, so now that that's out of the way, something deeply important, um, Linux ConfAU takes the safety of its participants extremely seriously. Um, we need everyone at this event to be able to enjoy themselves. So if you show behavior that makes another attendee feel unsafe, uncomfortable, or threatened, we need that behavior to stop. Our code of conduct, which everybody at this conference has agreed to when they collected their ticket, defines standards of behavior that we expect of everyone at this conference. You can find a link to that code of conduct at linux.conf.au slash safety. If you feel unsafe, uncomfortable, or threatened, you can report an incident following the process that is listed at linux.conf.au slash safety. The process is listed on posters throughout the venue, and there are people who will listen to your reports and take them seriously both organizers and community members, and you can make reports by phone, by email, or going to the check-in desk downstairs and asking for somebody to help you. So once again, linux.conf.au slash safety explains that process. If you wish to applaud, you can do so now. <laughs> so uh, quite a large number of you paid money to come along to this conference. Um, it turns out that when you add up the amounts that you get from ticket sales to a conference, um, you basically get enough money to afford uh, piles of dirt for everybody to eat at morning tea and a very uncomfortable tent in which to hold the conference. Um, and that's not really something that we wanted to show, uh, show people. So the good news is that there are lots and lots of organizations um, around the world and in Australia uh, who are happy to support this community to make sure that we have an excellent conference in an excellent venue with excellent social events. Otherwise, we would need to charge twice as much and probably not nearly as many of you would come along here. Um, so we're gonna go through our sponsors and, uh, and thank all of them because they really do help make this conference happen. So the first is IBM, who are one of our Emperor Penguin sponsors. They've been around uh, Linux ConfAU for a very, very long time and uh, we thank them for their continued support. Mm. Uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, who are the, uh, the successor to, to HP, uh, HP as one of our sponsors. Uh, they are, once again, one of our Emperor Penguin sponsors, and uh, we thank them for their support as well. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Um, AARNet are one of our King Penguin sponsors, and I uh, thank them earlier, but they have made our Wi-Fi access um, basically to the standard that we want here at LinuxConfAU at a venue that they've never operated out of before. Uh, Steve Walsh from Arnett has been working tirelessly for the past three or so days to get Wi-Fi up here. And it seems to be working at the opening of the conference, which is just wonderful. Um, uh, the Tasmanian government, who are new sponsors to LinuxConfAU, uh, surprisingly, um, uh, we have lots of speakers. Not all of them can afford to travel to Australia. And so um, to, to get them here, we need to have a, a speaker travel fund. And the Tasmanian government uh, came along and said, yes, we'd love to fund the, uh, the speakers. So uh, basically, uh, they're responsible for a lot of great people being here, and we thank them for that. 
Our Royal Penguin sponsors, Red Hat and Sousa. Our daily penguin sponsors, Google, Elastic, and the IT Professionals Association. And our fairy penguin sponsors and in-kind sponsors. Uh, fairy penguin sponsorships are a really cool thing. Basically, when you buy your ticket to LinuxConf AU, you can take the option of giving us $1,000 on top of your ticket price. Um, there are many people who, uh, who choose to do this, and it helps us put on a much better conference, and we give you recognition as a sponsor for it. So if you come along to next year's conference and wish to help make it even better, please consider speaking to your employer and asking them to fund you as a fairy penguin sponsor. This year, our fairy penguin sponsors are the Tasmanian Partnership for Advanced Computing at the University of Tasmania, uh, Sticker Mule, who provided us with a pile of really good, excellent, high-quality stickers featuring our wonderful conference artwork, Taz Networks, uh, who provided some of the fiber into this building that Arnett are using, uh, Hortonworks, Spreedbox, Coordinates, Lulzbot, and for some reason, the FreeBSD Foundation. Two more sponsors who have come along and, uh, and done really awesome things for this conference. The first is GitHub, who funded our financial assistance program so that we could bring more people to this conference who could not otherwise afford to be here. And they also funded our free childcare, which is over in the Riviera Room. <laughs> and Wargaming Sydney, who have provided everybody at this conference with two free hot beverages from our standard ritual coffee. And now to another organization who I wish to come up and uh, say a few words. I would like to invite Karen Sandler, who is the coordinator of Outreachy, to come and say a few words about Outreachy. Hi, Karen. Thanks so much. Uh, a huge round of applause for Chris and all of the organizers of this LCA, which is so awesome. And if I can ask every one of you, if you see someone with an organizer lanyard, if you could give that person a hug, a high five, or a thumbs up, depending on how well you know them throughout this entire conference, that would be amazing. <laughs> uh, so I'm just here to briefly introduce a program called Outreachy. Raise your hand if you've heard of Outreachy and know what it is. Okay, so it's maybe about like uh, half of the audience. I'm a coordinator of Outreachy. It's a, a diversity program uh, to help bring more uh, women, non-binary people, and people of color into free and open source software. I'm a uh, coordinator along with these other fine people, uh, Tony Sebro, Cindy Polaris, Sarah Sharp, and Marina Zurizinskaya. Um, and uh, we work to have paid internships for, uh, for uh, women and non-binary people internationally, and then we expanded to people of color in the United States because it's quite complicated, but we're working towards uh, doing that. So in this talk, I'll focus more on uh, the component of including women since that's more relevant uh, here. The reason why we do this is, uh, is, is probably evident to many of the people in this room, uh, and to other people in this room, it's probably something that they have never even seen. It's uh, a very interesting thing. There's a lot of uh, subtle and not so subtle uh, sexism uh, in our communities. Uh, I, I actually, uh, it's, it's funny, when I first started out, I, I was someone who thought that uh, we were in this like post-sexism world. <laughs> and I, I know people were laughing uproariously. Uh, I, I really thought that, uh, that the only thing that we needed to do was to have the women that were participating in the field be so awesome that uh, there would be no question that women should belong. And that every but it turns out that uh, that is simply just not how things are and how they've been working. And we need to uh, uh, take active steps. Uh, studies uh, show that uh, there are many reasons why uh, women in particular are, uh, have, uh, have problems getting involved in technical fields um, and are many times just inadvertently excluded. Um, there are so many studies, I, I could pull uh, a number of them and put them up, but, uh, but uh, the, the most in some of the most interesting ones to me are the ones where, uh, where when women contributors are identified as women, people evaluating their contributions think that they're not very good. But when you take 
the, uh, their identification, or you know, they take their identifier off of it, and it's just some contributor. Uh, women's contributions are ranked generally more highly than men's, um, and it's uh, it's a very interesting. And there are many reasons uh, that people think that that's the case. But over and over, these studies show that uh, that women are given um, are, are put to a much higher standard, and um, and thus uh, simply uh, separate from all of the uh, unfortunate and unwelcoming. Um, uh, experiences that women might experience here. Um, in any event, uh, what we do know is that about a quarter of all software developers are women. Um, about 18%, that's a US number, uh, are, are women, uh, but I think it's comparable in Australia. But in free and open source software, it's somewhere between 1 and 11%. It's incredibly low. 11% is one of the, uh, the, the, is the most, the highest number that I know of that a survey has gotten of uh, women contributors to free and open source software. So for whatever the reason, whether, uh, you know, whatever uh, rationale that you might think, the truth is that uh, we're simply potentially inadvertently excluding, but, uh, but women are just not here and not participating in free and open source software. So we tried to take all of the reasons why we thought that women were not participating in free and open source software when we started uh, uh, ramping up the program originally, and we systematically addressed each one of them to create this program, which we now call Outreachy, where we do paid internships uh, for, uh, for uh, women and non-binary people, and again, people of color in the United States, and we, uh, we hook them up with a mentor, and we, uh, we get them working on free and open source software projects, um, including the Linux kernel, uh, OpenStack, uh, Gnome, Fedora, Wikimedia, Mozilla. Um, it's, uh, it's been an amazing program, and it's been going on for some time. Uh, we've had amazing results with people participating in the program, um, excelling, and, um, and in many cases, sticking around. We've had over 300 participants, and from those participants, many of them have become speakers at conferences, um, full-length speakers. I think, it, I think it's like 50 of our past participants have now gone on to become experts. Um, yeah. <laughs> Women who have participated have become mentors in the program, too. Um, we've only recently added people of color to the program in the United States, so we don't have metrics yet to track how that's going to be. But, uh, but in, the, um, in the past, uh, we've not only had women become mentors, but one, one woman became a mentor of another woman who also became a mentor. She was a grand mentor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, which means that it's sort of just overall building the community. And we just have new community members that are sticking around. Uh, participants in the program have become uh, members of the board of directors of multiple organizations that participate. Uh, the people who participate become key voices in free and open source software. And you can help. Uh, many of you could help us spread the program, um, spread the word about the program so that people can know to apply. You can, if you participate in a free and open source community, you can participate in our program. Um, if you're aware of, uh, if you work at a company that might sponsor, you can do that too. I've got stickers for Outreachy, so if you want to come see me, I'd be happy to talk about it with you and to provide you uh, with one. And um, also with Conservancy, Software Freedom Conservancy, which is the nonprofit home of Outreachy. Um, and I think I am out of time, but thank you very much. Karen. So you may be wondering uh, why we just had uh, Karen up on stage, uh, more or less unannounced. Uh, but LinuxConfAU has a raffle each year to raise money for a worthy cause. And considering our theme this year being the future of open source, uh, we on the conference organizing team thought that it would be great for the LinuxConfAU community to make a direct contribution to the future of open source in our region specifically by making sure that women who come to open source get an introduction to our community that represents the absolute best of what we do. So we are going to try and raise the funds to sponsor one outreachy intern. We need to raise 9,000 Australian dollars. This will fund one intern to join an open source project. It will fund a mentor and some travel towards a conference, and we want that conference to be LinuxConfAU, uh, so we've arranged for tickets to next year's event uh, to be donated to Outreachy so that uh, you know, they can come and see our community in person. Um, tickets will be on sale from lunchtime at the check-in desk. Um, so go and buy some tickets and 
we're going to try and raise a lot of money for a very, very, very worthy cause. The prizes we have are a 3D printer donated by Lulzbot, which has an open hardware design and is running entirely open source software. The second is a Spreed box, which is a, uh, a plug-in computing device that runs the Nextcloud suite of software, so you can self-host your own email and video conferencing type stuff uh, just by plugging a device into your PowerPoint. And the third is one of our lectern fronts after the conference signed by the artist. Ooh. OK, I'm going to reorder those prizes later on. <laughs> Okay, uh, so yeah, come and buy raffle tickets. We want to try and raise $9,000 from the raffle such that we can fund one outreachy intern uh, to get an excellent introdu introduction to our community. So let's talk a bit about who you are and who's come to this event. Um, the vast, vast majority of you are from Australia. Uh, the best represented state is Victoria, followed by New South Wales. <laughs> Right. Uh, there are 21 other countries represented. You have truly come from all around the world. This is a truly international conference, and we thank you all for traveling so very, very, very far to come here. There are 387 men here and 65 women. There is also one yes please, which is weird because we said gender in the form. <laughs> Um, there are 143 people who didn't declare their gender. Uh, if in future years this question gets asked, uh, we'd ask that if you can, please report a gender such that we can get better metrics for our conference. The only thing we use is to keep demographics. This is actually the first year we've collected this directly at uh, a registration time, and I think it's deeply in our interest to continue reporting this. Uh, so that's 14% women or 15% of people who are not men. Um, thanks to our program committee this year, they returned a program, which is Wednesday through Friday, where 25% of our speakers are women, which is equal to the best Linux Conf AU ever, and is also a record in terms of raw numbers of women speaking. Um, this is something I hope we directly improve on in the future, and I hope that future conferences also report this data. OK, so let's talk about this week and what you'll be doing over the next five days. So the first thing at this conference was the opening reception and networking breakfast. If you have a professional ticket, uh, hopefully you went. If you didn't, I can't take you back in time and go to the breakfast. I'm sorry. Um, hopefully you met a lot of new people. Hopefully you, uh, you got to, uh, you, you enjoyed yourself. And we've also freed up an evening for you to do uh, more things later on in the week, um, which might have been a good thing for you. Um, today we have mini comps. There's also mini comps tomorrow. Uh, mini comps are a somewhat unique part of Linux Comp for you. They're community organized tracks that run on a special interest. Basically, enthusiastic people respond to our call for proposals, and we on the organizing committee chose the topics that we thought we needed to hear more about. Our mini comp organizers went out and found speakers on those topics to help bolster our program and make this program run out to a full five days. Um, today we have topics including system administration, um, open knowledge, which is science, data, that sort of stuff, um, kernel development, uh, open source and free software games, uh, open radio, and there is also one mini conf that is just full of completely awesome tech topics where all the presenters just happen to be women, um, which is great. Uh, later on in the week, Wednesday through Friday, uh, we have the main part of our program, our selected presentations. We received 421 proposals for talks and tutorials this week, uh, this year rather, which is overwhelmingly a record for this conference, I believe, by more than 100 proposals. Uh, so I'd like to thank our uh, papers committee, uh, including Michael Still and Michael Davies, our program chairs, uh, for helping facilitate uh, the decision of choosing which 80 talks we'd have this week. It was very, very, very difficult, and I think they did an outstanding job in delivering a really, really good program. So thanks to them. <laughs> there are lots and lots and lots of talks this week, and I want to give you a mo I want to take a moment to talk a bit about question time because it's a very, very important part of our conference. Um, 
We have speakers who are experts from all around the world. They have travelled a very long way here to share things that they are, uh, that they are experts on. Um, we've invited them specifically to tell you things. Um, a way to find out more things from these experts is to ask them. So when we provide a mic to you at the end of talks, it is not an opportunity for you to stand up and give a lecture, um, a lecture on, a, on the topic that you care deeply about. We have numerous opportunities during the conference, which I'll explain in a moment, for you to come up and share stories and give your own talks about things, even if you are not on the program. Um, questions are how we can get our speakers, who've given up quite a bit of their time to come here, to share even more of their knowledge with the rest of the audience. So, when question and answer time comes, please phrase your questions in the form of a question. <laughs> Something we are doing differently this year. Normally we have uh, volunteers from our call for volunteers come up and introduce people. Um, this year we wished to help let even more people at Linux Confeu help out make this conference a huge success. One way to make sure our speakers get a great question and answer session and a great introduction, which is a fantastic confidence booster, um, is to join us as a session chair. To sign up as a session chair, it's, it's so easy to sign up. Um, go to the Linux Conf AU schedule, look at Wednesday through Friday, and look for one of these links that says volunteer. Click on it, and then click on the second link, which requires you to log in, and uh, that will sign you up as a session chair. All you have to do for that is show up to two talks in a row in the same room that you otherwise would have shown up at and introduce the speaker and facilitate the Q&A. It is the easiest way to volunteer for this conference and I totally encourage all of you to go along and find some talks that you'd be happy to introduce and, uh, and sign up as a session chair. Um, we have four excellent keynotes this week who are talking about really interesting aspects of the future of open source. Uh, Pia Waugh, who basically invented open data in Australia, and, um, and she also ran Linux ConfAU 10 years ago, um, who is giving our keynote tomorrow. She is gonna be absolutely fantastic. Uh, we also have Dan Callahan from Mozilla, who's going to talk a bit about uh, how to plan for, uh, how to plan to make open source software projects uh, disappear gracefully. Uh, and he's going to be using the recent shutdown of Mozilla persona as a way to frame that. Um, Nadia Egbal, who wrote an absolutely amazing report on the quite dire state, uh, state of funding in open source. Oh, that's my phone. I should have shut that up. <laughs> Please, everybody, shut your phone up. <laughs> mm. Nadia Egbal, who wrote a wonderful report on the dire state of open source, who's going to be telling us a bit about how to make open source more sustainable and some of the work that she has been doing since writing that report. And uh, Robert Lefkowitz, who, from what I gather, is going to be talking about whether or not free software is something that can work into the future, um, and whether or not we need to think about new freedoms to guarantee our users and our developers. Um, these are all really deeply excellent speakers, and I encourage you to show up at nine o'clock sharp every morning for the rest of this week. There will be spot prizes at 8.58 a.m. every day. So if you show up early, you might get a prize. Birds of feather sessions, which are informal meetings on a topic of your choice. These can be over lunch. These can be run in the evening. These can be run during sessions. We are providing a room on Friday to run your own birds of feather sessions. Um, we also have every room in this convention center available until 11.30 p.m. every night. So if you want to come in, plug a laptop into a projector and give a talk about something, perhaps even with an audience, um, you can do that. If you wish to register yourself for a Birds of Feather session and make people aware of it, you can go to the conference wiki, which is at linux.conf.au slash wiki. Lightning talks. These are an opportunity for you to take the stage on basically any topic of your choice, as long as it is acceptable material otherwise at this conference. Um, with slides, they'll be just before the conference closing on Friday, and we'll publish information on how to sign up for Lightning Talks on Wednesday or Thursday of this week. Other things that are here. Coffee by Ritual Coffee Tasmania. 
Uh, that is their Twitter handle. There is another coffee roaster in San Francisco called Ritual Coffee who really don't appreciate being thanked for the coffee here in Tasmania because they didn't make it. Um, so if you are going to tweet at our coffee providers, that's them. Uh, Wargaming Sydney, once again, thanks to them for providing everyone with two free coffees. Hopefully that's enough to get you hooked and wanting to buy more. Catering. This year we have morning tea, afternoon tea, and if you've been to a Linux Comfort you before, this might surprise you, lunch. <laughs> there will be buffets running in the exhibition foyer and downstairs in the boardwalk gallery. Um, you do not need to eat directly next to the buffets, and indeed, given the space constraints, we would prefer that you didn't. Um, Rest Point has wonderful grounds. There's a patio directly outside the exhibition foyer, and the boardwalk on the lower level goes around to the, uh, the lawns on the waterfront. You can eat anywhere you like. Just come and bring your plates and cutlery back once you're finished. Please don't leave it lying around in random places. Um, enjoy, this, uh, enjoy this wonderful location. It, the weather is going to be great all week, so we really encourage you to eat outside if you can. Um, the speaker's dinner. If you have uh, on your badge, you'll see there's some icons here. It goes uh, penguin one, microphone, so yeah, penguin some number, microphone some number. If you have a number that is greater than zero next to the microphone on the right-hand side, uh, that means you have a ticket for the speaker's dinner. Uh, that is tomorrow. We'll be reminding you about this tomorrow. Uh, buses will leave between 5.30 and 5.50 from the hotel lobby tomorrow night. The Penguin Dinner, which is our, uh, basically our whole of conference social event. Uh, this comes for free with, uh, for people with professional tickets, for speakers, for those sorts of people who've got the, the more expensive end of tickets. Uh, for everyone else, uh, the cost is $95. Um, you can find out if you have a Penguin Dinner ticket by looking at the number to the right of the penguin on your badge. Uh, if that is zero and you think it should not be zero, you can go to linux.conf.au slash dashboard, log in and click on the Penguin Dinner Tickets option and buy yourself a Penguin Dinner Ticket. If you hold a professional ticket and you've not collected any Penguin Dinner Tickets yet, your first one will be given to your, you for free automatically. So if you do not have a Penguin Dinner Ticket yet and you want one, please make sure you register for it at the first available opportunity so that we can get our catering numbers down. So uh, right now, there is morning tea outside in the exhibition foyer and in the boardwalk foyer. So if you're the first people out, maybe go downstairs so that there's no bottleneck right outside this room. That'd be really great. Uh, mini comps start at 10.40 in all the conference rooms. All the conference rooms are attached to the exhibition foyer or the uh, Wellington foyer downstairs. Later today, in this room, is the annual general meeting for Linux Australia, uh, where we'll be uh, re announcing the election results for the incoming council, and also um, basically giving you an opportunity to, to ask any reasonable question to the outgoing uh, council. And GitHub are running a workshop called Patchwork, which is an opportunity for people to learn how to use Git and contribute to open source projects using GitHub's workflow. Uh, if you think that's a thing that you can mentor, help mentor, or it's a thing that you would like to participate in, uh, there is free catering. And the sign-up link is linked off the Monday schedule at linux.conf.au slash schedule. So with that, please go out, enjoy LinuxConf.au, and I will see you all tomorrow morning at 9. <laughs>